Whoa, that's an actual house, I think. One last breakfast before leaving New Orleans because there's something you gotta get when you're here. No way, it's not like you What up? She watched your show. You watch the show? Religiously. Does she? Yes. Wait, why do you say you don't watch the show? I do watch it, okay. but I don't want to be on okay, it. Okay, okay, you don't need to be on it. She should be on it. <laughs> What's your name? She loves you. What? Arvani. The Arvani. only reason I know who you are is because she watched the really? show. Really? I'm always like, oh, I need to go to these places. Well, well, thank you. No. So, so this is Cornell. You own this place, I Cafe own. Porsche. Is this how it's Porsche in Cafe, Snow? Cafe Porsche and Snow Bar. Snow Bar. Okay. Well, I heard really good things about your place, so I'm really excited. Thank you. I I truly appreciate that you came by. You want to try my gumbo? I will try your gumbo. Of course, I'll try your gumbo. gumbo. I make the gumbo. She you make the gumbo. gumbo. Okay. She watch you if she makes your gumbo. I I I, I am excited. No, I'm like even more excited. I just got the gumbo here. It wasn't something I was coming to get, but they said I should try it, and I'm never gonna refuse any offer of food. And look at this thing. You ever seen a whole half crab and a sausage in here? There's meatballs in here. It's like the whole cast of the Little Mermaid is here. I've only had gumbo maybe a couple times around um, the New Orleans area. I've never had a like really overwhelmingly good bowl of gumbo. I think this might be really, really good. I told you guys this before, but when you try something that's just transcendently delicious. You're not just gonna taste it, you're gonna feel it. All right, so one sip of this, like a shock wave through my body. It's been sitting in a pot stewing for hours and now it's in front of my face. Wow, that flavor is intensely good. Oh my gosh. Havana's the one who made this. Havana, this. I'll be back for this. I'm gonna recommend anyone who's coming here Get your gumbo here. Drop in some rice as well. Mm. I feel kind of bad because um, they asked me if I wanted a cup or a bowl. And since I'm about to, you know, hit to the land, I'm about to start the, the food thing tonight. I was like, yeah, just give me a cup, it's fine. Every gumbo I've had is it's, it's good. It's just, you know, it's okay. They gave me a bowl instead. Thank you so much for me not having food regret today because if I just got a cup, I'd be hating myself on the road the whole time. Oh, I'm so excited to try this meatball. I'm not a gumbo expert, I'm not. I'm not a Cajun Creole food expert. This is freaking incredible. Oh man, that's just flavor concentrated. Like, all the best tender crab meat. I soaked up all that great gumbo flavors and just dip it like a little cracker. Oh, thank you. This is the carol. Oh my gosh. Oh, that looks beautiful. Whew. If this was a cartoon, you could see like a little animated smell thing coming. I'm grabbing my nose and pulling it closer to this dish. Can I please get this as an air freshener? This is different because the grits is fried and it's shrimp and sausage. And this is just sauce, this cream sauce. I don't know what it is, but I know it's cheesy because I can smell that from a mile away. Look at this fried grits. I've never seen fried grits before. Maybe it's really com common. I don't know. I just never seen it and it's fried to golden perfection on the outside. Look at that, holy cow. Put this on your bucket list. You come to New Orleans, come here for breakfast like I did, get the gumbo, get the carol. Just like I thought, perfectly crunchy on the outside, just creamiest grits on the inside, packed full of flavor. And you can see here, there's bay leaves, there's herbs and spices, and you just wanna make sure you drown the grits in this delicious cream sauce. The sauce is so creamy and cheesy and it complements the grits exceptionally well. The two extreme textures, from extremely crunchy to extremely creamy. It's like if you ever look into a sunset and the sunset kind of meets the heavens and you're just like, got that perfect forest gum moment where you're like, I don't know where heaven ends and earth begins. It's so beautiful. That's my best forest gum impression. If you don't come here and try this stuff, I guarantee you, it'll be a massive food regret. And with all the savoriness, the sweetness of the shrimp just stands out. So good. Everything. Thank you, I appreciate it. I'm not blowing smoke. This is that good. No, thank you. I just want to say thank you, like I tell all my no. customers, thank you so much for allowing us to cook for you today. I truly appreciate that you did allow us to cook for you. 
and it means a lot. No, you're it the means a lot that you actually came onto the property. Well, thank you, and you, you're the sweetest, and your staff's the sweetest, and everyone I've met is so lovely, and the food is out of this world. So the lesson today is, if you're heading out of town, and there's a place you wanted to try, but you're not sure if you should just leave or try the place, always eat first, always, and trust your food instincts. Now I'm good, now I'm ready for my seven hour drive to Atlanta. Seriously, I was on my way out of Atlanta, and I was like, should I just go eat breakfast here? And I came, met the sweetest people, had the best food. Again, food gods, don't question their methods. All right, let's go to Atlanta. Those are some intimidating storm clouds. It's gonna thunderstorm in about an hour, so I wanna get to my hotel before that happens, but I'm in Atlanta. I've been in Atlanta maybe two times before, never specifically for food. And everyone's been saying, go to Atlanta, eat the food, and I'm ready to eat. Yeah, the first stop I'm making is this very Korean food focused plaza with a supermarket, and look at this, seafood on fire. What attracted me to this plaza, I think this, this, maybe this? Yeah, this is it. Anyway, huge Korean population in Atlanta, and I've just been craving, craving some Buddha Jage, and this place sells that. Oh, I like how these things are set up. Well, this place is really catered towards Koreans. Everything is in Korean on the menu. I can't, I don't know what's going on. I want to take a Buddha Jage, medium. So I got Buddha Jage for three for one. I tell ya. I miss this, I truly do. And I haven't been to a restaurant, like a, like a Buddha Jage centric restaurant. I haven't seen that in New York. I haven't seen that really anywhere. So this is like the first place in the US, maybe they exist somewhere else, but first place in the US, in Atlanta, a Buddha Jage centric restaurant. And these are the exact same noodles they use for Buddha Jage restaurants in South Korea. And before the food gets here, a huge shout out to Surfshark VPN for sponsoring this video and continuing to support this channel. You guys heard me talk about Surfshark VPN a lot because I think this is something that everyone should have. If you don't know, a VPN, it's a virtual private network. You know a lot of times you're like Googling a certain term or a product, or just typing it in any software on Facebook, on Instagram, you're chatting with someone, and all of a sudden they ask for that product or whatever you're talking about start popping up everywhere. So VPN, it's a virtual private network. And what Surfshark VPN does is that it encrypts and secures your personal data before it goes over the internet. So it stops all these digital snooping that pretty much everybody does. And especially right now, people are traveling more, you're connected to all sorts of different different Wi-Fi hotspots, which opens up more opportunity for people having access to your personal information. So that's what makes a service like Surfshark even more vital right now. Also, Surfshark has HackLock ID, meaning that if someone's trying to have access to something like your email, you're gonna get notified right away. Also, on the entertainment side, if you ever want to see what other country offers on their Netflix site, and yes, it is very different. You can actually use Surfshark VPN to kind of trick Netflix into thinking that you're actually in Japan or in the UK, and then you'll have access to all of their Netflix video library. Or if you're traveling outside the country, you want to have access to your Crunchyroll account or Hulu account. You can also use Surfshark VPN to kind of trick them into thinking that you're actually in the States so you can have access to those services. So if you want to try this out, go to my link down below. Use my promo code Dumpling. You're going to get 83% off your order and three months for free. And you can try it out for 30 days. If you don't like it for whatever reason, get your money back. What's really cool about this place is that you want some privacy? There you go, your own little private eating booth. Mm. Bunch on this too, delicious, especially that kimchi. There's a lot of sausage in here. Mm. So I think I told you guys this before, my first sort of encounter with a Buddha Jage, like an unofficial version, was back when I was going to college at Truman State University. I didn't have any money and I was hungry all the freaking time. But what I did have was two rice cookers. I think I had one, my other Asian friend had one. Cause you know, if you're Asian in college, you have a rice cooker, that's just what you have. So we would get together on the weekends and, and go to the supermarkets and we find these packs of hot dogs that were just about to expire. Then at the time that that store was selling for 10 cents 
cents a pack. So we buy all these hot dogs and of course instant noodles, which are really cheap, come home, cook it in a stew. Of course we didn't have kimchi or spam or scallions that's in here or mushrooms or any of the ingredients that they have here. So one of the rice cooker will be cooking that stew and the other one would just be cooking rice. And afterwards, instant noodles with cut up hot dogs over rice. So maybe that's the reason, I don't know. I just love this dish and I ate it all the time while I was in South Korea. Mm. And this broth. Oh. That is delicious. Oh. You gotta get the American cheese with the buddho jjigae. That makes this broth thicker and creamier and more delicious. That soup is so good. And these noodles have soaked up all that great broth in here. Mm. Oh, that just makes me so homesick for Korea. Even though I just spent like a few months there, this is just the most comforting Korean dish and just always brings me back to my happy place when I was over there and just every day being able to go out and have all the great food and the fond memories. And this noodle soaked up. All that fantastic essence. You got Spam in here as well, in addition to the hot dogs. I would prefer more Spam than hot dogs. Right now, the Spam ratio is like three to one. Spam and noodles in a buddha jjigae makes it legendary. I'm so glad I still have so much broth left, even after the noodles has soaked up a lot of it. This broth is just making me so happy right now. Some Spam and sprouts over rice. Add a little bit of kimchi. I gotta come back to this place because they have another pot. There's a stir fry pot that they said is their staff favorite. Of course, I wanted the traditional Buddha Jika, but I would love to try that next time I come back. Maybe that'll be tomorrow. Atlanta has a huge Korean population, so I'm very excited to just be my way around for the next couple of days. And already, like, there are places that wasn't on my list that showed up, like that seafood on fireplace. Oh, it looks amazing. Oh, man, there's big pieces of ground meat in here as well, covered in chilies and sauce. Mmm. That's pretty much done. A little pieces left. This place is starting to fill up. So I'm almost done. Forgot about this rice soup. So they give you water and you pour it into your leftover rice and just get that nice crunchy part of the rice. I kind of messed this up a little bit because I think I should have just done this in the beginning of my meal, not when the rice is kind of cold. Mm. Burnt rice soup. It's basically like a burnt rice tea. That was intensely satisfying. Little Jay gave for three, for one. All right, let's go get a real drink. Yeah, that place. I'll be back tomorrow for that. Oh, what's funny was that when I was paying for the check, uh, the, the the auntie over there, she's like, do you want a box? I'm like, for, for what? I don't know, box for what? She's like, you must have a lot left over. Um, so do you want a box for all that? Then I told her, nah, there's nothing left over. I ate it all. Well, I didn't say it in a, such a creepy way, but I live to prove Asian aunties wrong. That's, that's like my whole goal in life. Another fun little plaza. Shabu Shabu over there, Cafe Benny over there. Chicken and pizza, that looks good. Pearl's tea. I think this is the, maybe the most popular bobo tea in Atlanta. Mm, I got a peach milk tea. Not bad. Nice to finally be here on a little food tour. Excited for tomorrow. See you then. At my hotel room, I found something interesting in the fridge. It's the fridge, so I was gonna put my water in here, then I, I saw a leftover taco salad. I mean, if it was a salad that was not leftover, I'd probably like that, but leftover food is never good in a hotel room. All right, new room. No salad. That's a win. And if somebody tries to attack me from coming through the door, 
Let's jump into the pool. You gotta think about these things. So my first meal of the day, I wanted to come here. This place is called La Meizu, which means hot sister. In this case, it's not like, it's not hot, it's more spicy sister. She's spicy, she's not hot. She's holding a chili pepper and not a bikini. So apparently this place has a Taiwan buffet every weekend, but of course not now. So let's see what we can get. Uh, this is the spicy um, water boiled beef. So these are the two items they recommended to me. Water braised beef is a Sichuan dish that I typically wouldn't get from a Taiwan restaurant, but they said this is really unique the way they make it. It is one of my favorite dishes of all time, so I'm game to try. And this is something I never got at a Taiwanese place. This is stir fried rice noodles. Now rice noodles are very big in, in Taiwanese cuisine, but usually the ones I've had were the soupy ones, were the stewed ones. I never had the stir fried ones before. And this is the water braised beef. Shreju Nyo. Wow, okay. I'm like salivating like crazy right now. This looks incredible. I've only had Sichuan food once in Taiwan, and honestly, it wasn't that great. But this thing, the sauce is thick. The beef is a plenty. And this is one of those, those, those dishes that will look really good when it's presented to you typically because it'll be like in a big bowl and covered in chilies. But of course, these are the times we live in. This looks very saucy and delicious sitting on my rice. That's delicious. Mmm. They did a really good job with this dish. What I expect from this dish typically, you gotta have the spice, you gotta have the numminess, which this dish 100% has. And what's incredible is that, this is also one of those dishes that you gotta watch out for peppercorn typically. I don't see any of that here. I don't see the random peppercorns that kind of mess up your, your tongue in this dish. There's sprouts, there's cabbage, the beef is super tender. And for some reason, the flavor is not as oily as you would typically find with this dish. Love the sauce, love it. Love the crunchy vegetables, the tender beef. Now, I don't know if this is one of those dishes that would be on their buffet once they open that back up, but I would have loved to come and try that buffet. I heard it's just like a dozen dishes, that, like well-made dishes. Of course, all you can eat. I said this when I was in Houston. One of my dream buffets is, of course, the Vietnamese buffet, which I had in Houston. The other one was a Sichuan buffet. So I could have all these great dishes in all you can eat capacity. And this place has something like that. They're really good. They're really good. What'd you get? I just got social chicken. Oh, from, from the barbecue place? Is that good? Very good. Very good? Yeah. I love soy sauce chicken. Oh, this is great. The rice noodles. That place? You know why? Why? Other places put a lot of salt. They put a lot of salt? Isn't salt good? It is very good. No salt. No, wait, no salt? Oh. There's enough flavor? Yeah. All right, I'm, I'm trusting you. Yeah. I'm gonna go get me a duck. He said the duck and the soy sauce chicken. Yeah, very good. Okay. Yeah. All right, thank you. Oh, I freaking love this. Mm. First of all, you can taste that great smoky heat from the wok. Texture is amazing. Chewy noodles, crunchy vegetables. And there are a ton of different veggies in here. You got carrots, you got mushrooms, some cilantro for good aroma. This is one of those dishes I love because there's so much going on. As you're chewing it, the flavor just grows and multiplies in your mouth, in your tongue, your taste buds. I'll just get happier and happier and happier. And I just thought of something I could do with this dish. You know how, how I love to marriage dishes together. I could use a little spice in here. Take some of these noodles, bring it to the water, braised beef, dunk it all up in that sauce, grab a piece of beef along for the ride. That is a great way to eat both of these dishes. Mm, this dish is excellent. I don't think I need my rice anymore. Just dunk all this beef dish onto the noodle dish. Mm, again, great numbing flavor without the pesky peppercorn. But let me go run really quick and get some uh, duck and soy sauce chicken to join this party because I trust Ray. He looks like an honest man. Mm. 
Look at that glisten. Duck and soy sauce, chicken covered in scallion sauce. So when it comes to Chinese barbecue, duck and the soy sauce chicken are my two favorite cuts of meat. Oh, that thing is tender. I'm sorry, am I hurting you with my chopsticks? This just goes to show, when a stranger pulls up next to you in a car offering food advice, you take it. That is an extremely tender, juicy, delicious cut of barbecue. The soy sauce chicken is so tender. Mm. And I especially like the duck. The skin tastes like something off a of Peking duck. Slightly crispy. completely evaporates into a puddle of juicy fat. Got some good food here, Atlanta. Nice day, perfect temperature, and eating delicious food on the hood of my car. If I want any more out of life, I'd just be greedy. All right, told you I'd be back. Seafood on fire. So this place I'm at, not a lot of people know about it. I just ran into it coincidentally, and I looked up all the reviews on it. There's really not many people talking about this place. So I'm really excited. I'm gonna try it out for you guys. If it's good, I'll let you know. I feel like if, uh, if you're a fan of The Little Mermaid, you would love this because the whole cast is here. You got monkfish, you got some mussels, there's crab, there's this big octopus. This looks like the type of octopus they fly in from Korea. And there's some unique food items on there as well. There's sea squirts, which you don't see every day. I haven't had that since I think uh, last time I went to Spain. There is fish eggs, whole chunks of fish eggs and fish sperm. So, you know, it's dish is very inclusive. And what I thought was noodles are actually sprouts. So this is just a ginormous seafood platter. Everything cooked fresh. So all this stuff was alive today. Just the freshest. Oh, there's jumbo shrimp as well. My mouth is watering as I'm talking about this, but oh my gosh, this is all cooked in a spicy journal. If you guys don't know what journal is, it's one of my favorite things to eat when I'm in South Korea. Mm. This is delicious. Oh wow, that's spicy. Great flavor. I mean, the sprouts, nice crunch, love that. Let's just dig right in and get ourselves a leg of the octopus. Chop this thing up like, like I'm trying to save the world from that substitute teacher. Yeah, that's fresh. That's delicious. Knocked it out of the park with the seafood. I mean, this stuff is definitely as fresh as you can get. And there's a little dipping sauce here that they give you. Looks like uh, some wasabi. Mm-hmm. Wasabi and a little soy sauce. Octopus right now is my favorite thing here. This is an egg sack from a codfish. I personally like it when the fish is all grown so I can eat more of it. That's really good. When I first saw this, I thought it was a silkworm. If you're not used to a sea squirt, that might be a very surprising texture and flavor for you. I don't want to let you know, it is normal. It's supposed to be kind of crunchy and a little gamey. Everything on the plate so far. Adds a little subtle sweetness to this whole situation. It's not a jirum, I was wrong. It's called a jim, jim. So this is a jim. It's basically a dish where the meats is stewed or boiled. So here, all the seafood and vegetables are cooked in the spicy, I'm assuming secret recipe sauce. What I like about this dish is that, first of all, the flavor is really good. It goes good with rice. Seafood is all incredibly fresh. Also, if you haven't tried some more exotic seafood items, they are available here, like the sperm and the eggs and the sea squirt. So you get to, you know, get out of your comfort zone a little bit and try some members of the seafood kingdom you typically will not eat. The chilies get to you. When you keep eating this, like you, your, your tongue slowly just feels more and more raw. So again, if you ever want to be warmed up really quickly, Come here and get this. All right, I'm gonna I've got some work to do, so see you in a bit. Definitely need a break after that. This is really cool. Honeycomb on a matcha milk. This is really good. Mmm. Just takes like little pieces of caramel. It just kind of crumbles in your mouth. Oh, this is great. 
So, so far, I realized that I bit off a little more than I can chew. So I was planning only like a couple days here in Atlanta. I was like, I'll blow through all the places I want to eat. Not even close. The last place that plate of food was way bigger than I thought it was going to be. So I think um, maybe a little dessert and I'm kind of done for today. So drink this and hear about this really good dessert place. Go check it out. This is apparently like the number one recommended bakery, Asian dessert place in Atlanta. First of all, I didn't expect all that juice to come from that thing. It is delicious though. I kind of forgot what I got. It's some kind of, oh, this is a pear. So it tastes like a pear and chocolate mousse and a chocolate cookie crumble on the outside. Beautiful and delicious. These are the nice I really enjoy. After a great food day, some nice dessert, some nice tea. Look out at the sunset over a parking lot. Simple pleasures in life. First day and a half in Atlanta. Really good food impression. I feel like I'm, I'm not even close to scratching the surface. There's so much good stuff here. One more day tomorrow, and then I'm heading back to New York. So I'm gonna make it count. And as always, all place went to. Listen down below for you. Thank you all so much for watching. Until we eat again, see you later.